Hi, my name is Dr. Ed Shahady, and we're here at the Cardiometabolic uh, uh, Risk Summit in Las Vegas, and uh, with me is Dr. Kevin Peterson, who's a uh, professor of family medicine at the University of Minnesota. Right. Uh, Kevin, I know that you're uh, very interested in beta cell preservation. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I, I think beta pre preservation is really fundamental to the uh, to understanding the promise of some of the new medicines in diabetes, right. especially those medicines uh, that affect the incretin pathway. Right. Right. I think we all are more interested uh, in in why some of these medicines work. Yeah. Um, you know, we learned about beta cell physiology back in medical school, but then we begin to forget about it because right. it hasn't played much of a role. Right. Right. Uh, nowadays, with these, with some of the new medicines. It plays an important role, especially right. in the durability of the of the medicine. Yeah. And so, it's the incretin class, the GLP-1 receptor agonist mainly. Right. It's it's really the incretin class that has the promise, and it's the GLP ones that have demonstrated that there is right. some promise. That um, after three years of GLP-1 administration, I know that seems like a long time, but right. after that amount of time, we know that the beta cell is in better shape. It's just healthier than uh, a beta cell that's been um, uh, in a person that has had good control with right. an insulin. It's just like if I, oh, it's different than insulin. Yes. Okay. So metformin, because we know after so many, so much time, the insulin, you, it's treat to failure, so sure. metformin. But with using, say, a GLP-1 receptor agonist, it looks like the beta cell is much healthier after a period of time, and right. they don't, it doesn't lose its effect. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. With, yeah. uh, when we look at beta cells with people with type Two that have been under good control but treated with insulin, um, and then we compare those people to people that have been on treatment treated and under similar control but with a GLP-1, we can take off those medicines and after four weeks the beta cell is still healthier right, right. than the person that's had the GLP-1. Right. Uh, in, with that's insulin it kind of goes back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we didn't get into the idea that, um, that really beta cell secretion that we have medicines right now that have been demonstrated to improve beta cell secretion. Uh, they haven't been able to affect glucose control yet, but uh, we've had people on, but, but after three years of exposure, we, we know that beta cells are healthier than they used to be. With all medications or no, something? No, just with a handful of these medicines. Right. With the, well, as I understand it, and I may not be clear on this, help me understand, is I guess we have some good animal studies, but human studies maybe aren't there. Do you? How do we justify this? How do we use this information? Sure. Well, the, uh, we know that uh, some of the incretins really are important in the generation of beta cells. Right. And, and right. so in animals, we're able to use those medications and we can see that they can, we can actually find uh, increased beta cell mass uh -huh. and improved secretion. Uh, that has a real potential for the treatment in humans. So we hope that with the treatment of some of our incretin agents that we might see a better preservation right, right. of those beta cells. You know, almost all the medicines we use currently, why they just fail after a few years. Right, right. The, even when you're in good control, the beta cell in type 2 diabetes continues to slowly die and, and wear out. Right. So if we can find medicines that will help us preserve or even increase some of those functionalities, then that would be a great medicine. Well, wonderful. Thank you very much, Dr. Peterson. Hi.